Hello everyone and welcome to another Versus Video Deck Tech. I am BBD and I'm joined once again by... CBM. And we are going to be battling some modern in preparation for Grand Prix Charlotte this weekend. Yep. Uh, CBM knows a lot about modern as he did top 8 the SCG Invitational last weekend with Amulet Bloom. Uh, but that is not the deck that we are playing today. We are playing some good old fashioned fair magic. Uh, Jeskai versus Jund. Um, but this is not really a traditional Jeskai deck. It's actually... A interesting deck that I saw. Uh, actually, I played against this deck. Uh, Caleb Durward was playing it on Magic Online. Not sure exactly where the deck originated from, but I know that he's been playing with it. It is a Jeskai Swans deck. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at it and see what it does. So basically, the core idea of the deck is to use Swans of Bryn Argol and Snow Covered Lands along with Scred. So Swans, the way it works is whenever damage is dealt to it, uh, you prevent the damage and you draw that many cards. And with a card like Scred is one of the few red spells that deals an exorbitant amount of damage like the longer the game goes on. Uh, the more and more snow cover permanents we get in play, Scred can deal upwards of like six, seven damage sometimes. So sometimes it's like play a swan, Scred my swans, draw six cards. And since it only costs one <clears throat> mana, it's very easy to actually resolve the spell. Cryptic Command... Uh, and sometimes deprived for the most part of the only hard counters that are seen play in modern. And uh, you know something like Mana Leak or Remand isn't going to do much against the Scred when you're trying to draw some cards. Plus, you just you know do six damage to a Tarmogoyf and kill it. Yeah, you can also, I mean, Scred is also just an efficient yeah. removal spell for your opponent's creatures as well, which is important to note. Um, but to play Scred, we do have to have Snow Permanence, so we have... Snow covered lands as our mana base mm -hmm. here, where we have uh, 11 fetches and nine snow covered lands, and only a few dual lands. So, our we're relying on a lot of basics, um, <clears throat> and relying on those snow covered lands to turn on our screds for the for swans, but also to kill our opponent's creatures. Which um, really isn't a bad thing, uh, having a bunch of basics since it gives us access to something like Blood Moon out of the sideboard, which as Modern's starting to shape up, looks like a pretty good place to be. Yeah, Blood Moon is only getting better and better in Modern right now. Uh, decks like Amulet and Tron are just destroying the format uh, in more ways than one. They're winning yeah. tournaments, and they're also just unhealthy for the format. <laughs> uh, but they, yeah, definitely require cards like Blood Moon, so having basics is not that bad of a thing. Uh, but even past that point, the deck is basically just a control deck of sorts, but different than the normal Jeskai control decks, we actually have access to a lot of creatures and a lot of burn spells, and um, it's more like a tempo-y deck than a true control deck. Uh, mm -hmm. We're not playing like, re like we're not playing um, like, you know, colonnades and things like that, like the normal decks do. We're not playing revelations and trying to win the game that way. Uh, we have like, you know, the Seren Visions, the Remands, all this, the cheap interaction with Snapcaster Mages, uh, and then a bunch of burn spells. So we can also win games just by burning our opponent out. Um, we don't actually have to have swans to win the game, uh, but it is a nifty combo with Lightning Bolt, Scred, and also actually Anger of the Gods is pretty sweet with swans as well. Where if we play as swans, um, there's a good chance our opponent might, you know, just play more creatures out on the board. Then we can cast an Anger of the Gods, draw three cards, not destroy our swans, kill everything else. Stuff, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, pretty good interaction there. It's also sweet that swans, like, there's not a lot of flying blockers. Yeah. So it's just going to do a lot of damage by itself. Um, and it dodges. Obviously, Lightning Bolt can't kill it because the damage is prevented. It also dodges Abrupt Decay. So really, the only removal spell that's seen you know, a healthy amount of play that actually gets rid of it right now is Terminate, which you know, conveniently gets countered by Spell Snare. Yeah, and I mean, there might be times where your opponent Lightning Bolts your Swans, and they don't draw a way to deal with it, and they still die to it anyway. Yep. Even though they get to draw three cards, which is not great. But sometimes, yeah, a big, a big beefy flyer uh, is good enough to win a lot of games in Modern. I've actually been winning a lot of games just with beating people down with Linvala, so uh, it's kind of the same thing. Uh, but yeah, that's the main deck. We have, I guess there's one other card here, Soulfire Grandmaster, which is kind of an interesting one in Modern. It is really good with all the cheap spells in this deck. So this deck has a lot of one mana spells, which are good with both Snapcaster Mage and Soulfire. So mm -hmm. just another way to get extra mileage out of our cheap one mana spells like Vision, Scred, and Lightning Bolt. For sure. And also even Stubborn Denial too. Uh, we can go Swan, Stubborn Denial, counter something, untap, cute. untap Scred it, <laughs> draw some cards. Uh, but yeah, this is the main deck for the, the, the Just Guy Swans deck. Let's go ahead and look at the sideboard. All right, we are back with the sideboard, and as you can see, we do have Blood Moons, as CVM alluded to. Uh, great against Amulet, Tron, 
uh, a number of other decks too that don't have that many basics where you can just blood moon them out of the game. Um, and we're going to be fetching basics anyway because we want our snow lands for scred, so it's actually just very convenient to play blood moon. In fact, I think you could actually main deck it in this deck. Probably should main deck it in this deck. Yeah. And uh, I would honestly probably want more than two, like three or four blood moons because oh that's that's just how modern is right now. You just need blood moon. Uh, we have a rending volley for twin. Uh, wear tear, just a very versatile card, good in a lot of matchups. Same with Path to Exile. Um, there's a lot of one ofs in the sideboard, which is actually a really good thing to do when you're playing decks like this. Because one, we have Snapcaster Mage, so if we ever draw our Purge, we can double Purge and matchups where it's great. Um, but also, we have ways to, a lot of ways to dig through our deck, like Serum Visions and things like that. So uh, if we, it, whenever you're playing a deck that has a lot of manipulation or draws a lot of cards, Playing extra like or playing a bunch of one ofs is, is like a really good strategy for the sideboard because, you know, maybe Celestial Purge and Path to Exile are like the same thing in some matchups, but there are matchups where this card's much better, the matchups where this card's much better, yep. and having a mix of the two lets you uh, have a better chance of drawing which one's relevant in the matchup. So uh, we we have a rest for the weary against burn, gain eight life, basically just feed the clans in white but better. Yeah. And you can also Snapcaster gain eight life, which is pretty sweet. <laughs> it's also important to note that a lot of these interactive spells that we're going to be sideboarding in are cheap. Yep. Uh, since they are just going to gain value with Snapcaster Mage and Soulfire Elemental, or Soulfire, Soulfire Grandmaster. Yeah. So uh, uh, it seems pretty sweet just to be able to, like, you know, rebuy a Rending Volley or a Purge or even a Rest for the Weary against Burn. Yeah, five mana, path your guy, <coughs> rebuy path. Um, and then we have the powerful combo of Engine and Explosives and Sony Silence. Guessing you don't board those in at the same time, but uh, Explosives is just a good answer to a lot of decks. It's really good against like cards like Lingering Souls and things like that. Also really good against the Bogles deck, which is starting to pick up a little bit in popularity, which is uh, almost unwinnable matchup for decks like this. You have to have cards like Engine and Explosives to even have a chance. Yeah. Um, and then Sony Silence is good against Tron and Affinity. Just the best Affinity hate card there is, so... Um, no reason not to play. If you're playing a white deck, you might as well be playing a couple of Stony Silence unless you're already really good against Affinity. Yep. And since this deck doesn't have, like, Electrolyzes and stuff, we're probably not that great against Affinity. Yeah. And then uh, Batter Skull just for matchups that go long. Spellskite for the random decks that Spellskite hoses, which there are some. Boggles and Infect being big ones. Yep. Also good against Twin. It's good against Twin, and it's actually surprisingly effective against Amulet as well. It is, actually. It shuts out um, Slayer Stronghold. And Sunhome. Sunhome, yeah. Two cards that let the deck win one or two turns faster than they normally would be able to. Yep. And you can actually use Spell Skite to protect yourself long enough for Path to Exile. You can actually win games by just pathing all their Titans. Sometimes that happens. Yep. So. Uh, but anyway, that is the sideboard for the Jeskai Swans deck. I'm excited to jump in and battle with it. I am playing against CVM, who is playing... Uh, I'll be using Josh, Rabbit, Josh Rabbit's Jun list yep. from the Invitational. Uh, he did place in the top four. And I think moving forward, it's basically what most Jun decks are going to be basing their, their list off of. So if you're planning on playing something in Grand Prix Charlotte that's, you know, a little off the beaten path, sort of like this deck... You definitely want to see how it does against Jund because it's going to be one of the most popular decks. Yeah, Jund is one of those popular decks and is generally a very good barometer to test every deck against because yep. if you can't beat Jund, you probably shouldn't play it. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and jump into the battles and see what happens. 